What's up, guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Successor. This is a game that takes place in the Wartile universe, so this is from the developers of Wartile, who, regardless of what you think about Wartile or whether or not you liked it, they definitely came up with an incredibly unique, incredibly polished style for their game. Wartile to this day, to me, stands out as one of the games that had one of the most unique art styles and presentational methods that I think I've ever seen in a game. And if you've never seen Wartile, go look at some screenshots. It's a great looking game. Successor is kind of a bottled up version of Wartile. So Wartile was like a level by level based game where you had these little figurines and you could level them up. And it was kind of a tabletop game, but it was also a video game. Successor's a lot like that, but it's been streamlined a little bit more, and this one's kind of a real-time strategy RPG with push-pause. If you've ever played something like Baldur's Gate, you'll know exactly what I mean. Not the new Baldur's Gate, but the older Baldur's Gates, where your characters technically pseudo take turns hitting based on initiative, but you can pause at any time to queue up orders. This game is like that. So we're going to dive on in today. We're going to take a look at this. This is an alpha that they've had for feedback generation. It's been up for probably about a year now, in all honesty. And every two or three months, I download it and I take a look at it. And the previous builds, I didn't think were quite ready for a video yet. This time around, I played through the prologue and I played through the tutorial and I actually enjoyed myself. And so I think that's a pretty good sign that it's time to show the game off and maybe drive up a little bit of hype or develop some thoughts about it. If after watching this, you wanted to get access to the playtest to Successor, you can do that right now. It's down below in the description. There'll be a little button on the Steam page that says join the playtest. I clicked on it and it instantly let me in. So I don't think it let me in because I'm a YouTuber. It was just a button down there and you click it and it's like, cool, game's in your inventory now. And I was like, sweet. Uh, that's a great way to test your game. Get lots of eyes, lots of feedback to figure out what's right and what's wrong about the title. Aside from that, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream, just in case you wanted to hang out live. But let's play a campaign. Uh, Betrayal and Revenge are basically the tutorial version of the game. So this gets you used to the combat, and then this gets you used to the region. Uh, so this game has an, over, an open world map, kind of. So your characters are on a giant medieval map and you go hex to hex and things happen. You resolve it sort of FTL style, but you're not on a track. You can go wherever you want, whenever you want, as long as you accept the responsibility that every time you move on the hex map, you've got to roll a die. And if that die comes up poorly, something bad's going to happen and it may drain your resources by forcing you into a fight you didn't want to take or something like that. We'll do Regicide since I'm familiar with the game, and we get to pick which hero we want to play as. As of right now, there is Lord Craig, and there is Lord Gwen. Uh, with Lord Craig, he is a brawler. This guy is a bamf to the max. Uh, his job is basically to put people's face through drywall. That's what he does. Uh, over here, you've got an archery lady. She, I think, has like a raven, and then she booby traps the battlefield as well. Along the way, you're also going to be building an army in this game, so you will find random generic units like scoundrels, pikemen, archers, shield walls, things like that that will help you in your quest. We'll go with Craig for right now since I'm familiar with him. I've never played Gwen before and so I didn't really want to like mess with- oh this is new. This was not a thing that I remember being in the game. Okay, I'm completely and totally wrong. There is an FTL style track right now. Fair enough. Our kingdom is currently under threat by a disturbing evil that is taking over regions and spreading chaos. Okay, so we've got an overview. Uh, we've got an overview of different regions. It looks like we've got the Imlands, we've got Hyahisir, and we've got Quidwaith. Ah, it looks like I was starting from the top. I saw the little skull for some reason. I thought that's where like we were. It was like the only icon on the map. I don't know. I'm in the middle of a video right now. My brain's not working well. Uh, down here at the bottom, there are a number of things that we can look at. So there's legendary items. We can get a big mace right there and ramen, which is civilized. And it's got a stronghold that's held by the Grim Legion. And over here, we've got Drillulian. I, I don't even know how to say I'm going to need a Welsh person. And I'm going to need a Welsh person stat for this one, all right? Somebody somebody, email Avic and let him know that Splat is having a lot of trouble right now with words that look an awful lot like Welsh. Uh, but this place over here, it gives us a great sword of frost. That's pretty cool. All right, well, we'll go with ramen first, and we'll just kind of see what happens over here. I like a little bit of ramen, a little bit of spam in it. Sounds all right. So this is our first region. 
the core gameplay of this is very simple. The goal of the game is that every single map tile, not these map tiles, but the over map, those regions are owned by factions. You are a lord that is fighting back against a tyrannical leader that has put these factions in control. And so much like, you know, what, what was that Ghost Recon Wildlands? You know how you had to whack all the sergeants? Then you had to whack all the lieutenants to find out where the capos were? And then you had to whack all the capos to figure out where the generals are? That's basically what you're doing in this game. Lord Craig is really pissed off and he is going to tear an unholy rampage of blood across the kingdom because the king tried to have him assassinated because he's just a good guy. He's just a nice dude. So our first stop is probably, we got an easy battle over there that gives us an ax. We've got an easy battle over there that gives us a shirt. Let's go after this one, I guess. And welcome to the battle system in Successor. It works pretty much how maybe you extrapolated. You click on a character, you tell them to go somewhere, you tell them to fight somebody, and in pseudo turn-based push-paused action, they will continue to beat each other to death until the entire field has been cleared and there's no one else to worry about. I'm going to take this high ground right here because I want this healing herb. Give me yeah, give me that give me that urbanation of healing. That guy tried to shank me. Uh, things you need to know about in the UI, if you look at the bottom, we've got our HP on the left, we've got our willpower on the right. Willpower is how we use these active abilities over here. What active abilities, you might be asking yourself? Well, like this kick. Boot! And there you go. I disintegrated him into a pool of blood with just a simple kick. What we want from this guy is we want the high ground. This game does give you enormous bonuses for maintaining the high ground and for maintaining flonks, bro. If you can get the flonky wonkies, man, a little bit of that flanking action in here, uh, you will basically win by default. This is a game of maneuvering, and this is a game of positioning. If you're fighting on flat ground, your character is a hero, so he's a little bit stronger than your average mook. But if you put a mook on the ground level like that over there, and my guy up on an elevated platform, at that point, the mook is dealing no damage. He's down to like two damage a swing, and I'm doing like plus four, or plus five damage a swing. And so you really want to pay attention to your positioning in this game. It's a big deal. We have a throwing axe. That means every battle we start with a throwing axe. That's good because the throwing axe can execute anybody that's not aware of you it's pretty good and we've also we apparently know how good the grim legion is now so they have plus two armor against close combat attacks we've also gained reputation what reputation does is it levels up this little meter in the top right hand corner and it dictates how many people you can have in your party it was just us flying solo on that last one solo like han and so we can now have two people so if we adventure around and we look around the map it's super possible that we will find like a spearman or like an archer or like a wizard or somebody that's going to be able to help us out a little bit. The ultimate goal of this map is to derive the enemy's strength and all the perks that they have, the positives and their weaknesses, and then attack their stronghold and wipe them out. That's the goal. And if you do that, you get to go on to the next map. And I think this is actually really kind of a cool mixture of FTL style on the rails randomized gameplay, but also a little bit of free roaming and a little bit of tabletop. I like what they've got going on here. Like the UI, it strikes me as being kind of a placeholder. Like I definitely think the UI could be cleaned up a bit and look better to the eye. So for example, we're looking at a map right now. I would turn this into an oak table in the background with like candles and running wax and like a book sitting over here and maybe like a plate with some crumbs and like a little piece of bread on it and like an apple over here and like a quill over here and maybe a dagger struck into the table over here. Uh, these little UI elements right here I think could use a little bit of shading and they could use a little bit of blending to go into the background a little bit better. But honestly, all this dead space right here is my big concern. This is fine and functional, but this dead space looks bad. All right, let's go ahead and we've got another easy fight over here and we get a super cool blouse if we go and if we go and kill these guys. So I'm going to go get my blouse. There's a bucket of water. You can use this to turn out campfires. Raises the spirit until it is extinguished. Oh, so I got to put the fire out. Okay, there's a healing herb over there that I kind of want to go for. Oh, I had to equip the axe to get the ability. I forgot to put it on me. All right, let's grab that right there. I don't want the enemy to be spirited. So what I'm going to do is we're actually going to kind of like bait them over here. And once they start their way up the cliff, 
I'm going to grab those herbs. And then we need to run back over this way. We don't want to get surrounded. We want one to a side. And then where's my bucket O water? I got the bucket, right? There we go. We doused it. So they're not getting bonuses anymore. I'm going to take the high ground real quick. And we're going to do a... How much HP does he have? 35? All right. We can execute him in just a second. There we go. Now we can execute him with forceful attack. There it is. And we all get 10 of our willpower back because of the kill right there. And it looks like it instantly refreshes when we do that. Which is pretty swell, actually. That works out pretty well for us. You can zoom in if you wanted to get a better view of the battlefield. I do think that the addition of things like action cams for using special abilities and for using things like throwing axes would be a really good idea. Uh, so, for example, let's say I wanted to throw an axe at this guy. It'd be really cool if the camera went zoom and it swooped down behind this guy's shoulder and it played like almost like a little mini cutscene with the figurines where he throws the axe and if it kills this guy, it sticks into his forehead and he falls backwards. And if it just wounds him, it sticks into him and it's in him kind of for like the rest of the battle. Be kind of cool, or like maybe he pulls it out and bleeds all over the ground, something red like that. It might break up the combat a little bit, but I think it would look cool. We can also loot the chickens, by the way. This game's kind of like Power Stone. There's a lot of items in this game that are kind of unconventional. Like you can beat a guy with a chicken to stun him for like six seconds. Let's go to our inventory. I'm going to equip that so I get a free throwing axe. We can't equip that because we don't use light armor, and this is light armor. They don't have the whole thing tracked out yet with perks and whatnot on this character sheet. I'm hoping they do later on and this becomes much larger and it's got kind of like a bio of the character or like the background of a spearman or something like that and then a list of what they have proficiencies with and like their ranges and stuff like that. I would like to see a full unit print out for just about everybody since it's supposed to be like a tabletop game with anything like D&D or Shadowrun You've got reference tables. You've got like full page spreads with art and stats for every single character, you know? Like if they're going for that tabletop feeling, you might as well go all the way with it. Let's go down to this tower and reveal some map. Let's see, this area has a chance of ambushes. We should grow our roster before, okay, well maybe we'll go over here then. Let's see here, you come across a hero trapped in a cage. Stranger! Help me, my captors hold the key to this cage. Well then, as an honorable lord, I will come to your aid, my friend. And we will sing jolly songs of victory. Oh, there's so many of them. That's not good. Maybe they're really weak? I don't think they're really weak, man. Uh-oh. I'm gonna need the chicken. Give me the- we're gonna need the high ground, and we're gonna need a chicken, all right? If we don't have the high ground and also a chicken, I don't see this going well for me. The undeads appear to move kind of slow. There are more of them than I expected. Hopefully this character's worth it and we don't die horribly right here. I was not expecting to have to go in on like a, like a 5v1. Alright, so I've got a throwing axe, right? Throw a throwing axe at him. There you go. He's dead. Throwing axe has killed him. Let's take this spot right here. He's going to step in. We're going to womp him because we've got a pretty good damage advantage right now. We're going to execute him. There it is. Execution's done. Step over to here. I want that high ground right there. Give it to me. There we go. He's only dealing one damage. We should be able to use our positioning to really outscale these guys. Hit him with that. We got another one coming in. He just throw something at me. Also, do I have a chicken? I do have a chicken. Throw a chicken at that guy. Yeah, get chickened on, nerd. Mm-hmm. Fear the wrath of El Pollo. Oh, what? You want chicken, too? You can have a chicken, too, nerd. Get that chicken. That's what I thought. Okay, he took low ground. That's fine. Our HP appears to be somewhat... Oh, he evened out the... Okay, we want to go up here, then. Oh, he's using an ability. We got to interrupt it. There we go. Cancel his ability. That also puts him on the low ground. He's still dealing like 8 damage to our 9, which is a little bit worrisome. I wish he was not dealing that much damage. Come on, Skeleton. Get up here. I don't have the willpower to execute this guy, no matter how badly I would like to execute him. And this guy's got heavy armor, which kind of worries me. Oh, he's trying to do that? Alright, interrupt him. There we go. Step down. Keep wailing on him. 
We've got a very slight damage advantage right now. If we didn't have a much thicker health pool, we would have a problem. All right, let's grab that cage key. There's a healing herb over there, too. I'll try to grab that. This is a very charming-looking game. I have to hand it to the developers. This is a game that looks great. So if I've got the healing herb, does it heal me right now? Oh, yeah, look at that. Gave me a little bit of... Oh, it regenerates you. Oh, wow, healing herbs are like dank, dude. Okay, so healing herbs are like really good. Who are you? Are you good? Do I want you in my party or do you suck it, sir? Bequeath upon me, bequeath right now in front of me what you're good at. A war priest. Oh, yeah, he sounds dope as hell. We've got the Sigmar is with us, brethren. Let's take a look at this war priest. So the war priest, he's got the holy relic. Spawn a relic for 30 seconds. It gives you two bonus holy damage to each attack made by a friendly unit inside that range. And then we also have the holy strike. Deal 30 damage to an enemy unit or 30 healing to a friendly unit. Damn, what a pickup. Okay, can he wear the vest? He can wear the vest, so he regenerates his endurance faster. And he gets two armor, so that's just flat damage mitigation right there, which is great. I don't have anything else to put in his off slot, so I guess I'll put it right there. Okay, so we've got some new places. We have a normal style battle over here that will fill in some faction info about these guys. Oh, really? This area is owned by like a necromancer. Okay. So immune to poison, but weak to unholy. De they're undead, but they're weak to unholy? Weird. The bony frames are strong against arrows, but weak to breach. Okay, we gotta watch out for those domination points, too. That's gonna be hard. That's normal. We don't know what this is. Let's go look. Uh, you get an uneasy feeling about the road ahead. You continue down the road and find a reward. A strong meal. All your units get 20 extra health in the next battle. Very nice. You hear cries for help coming from an old tree. You decide to step in and help, and a fight breaks out. More Skeletors. We gotta kill them all, and there's a guy up in a tree like Zacchaeus. Okay. My inclination... Oh, I love this guy's Gambeson, dude. He looks... Or his surcoat. It looks really cool. Like, I wish I could zoom in further, because I want to look at the... I want to look at the at the, the character models. Like, the rest of the game is so attractive that, like, I want to zoom in further and, like, have a look at them because they've really gone to an effort here to give them almost like a, a glossy tabletop look. Like a Warhammer figurine. Like, they're realistic, but at the same time, they've put, like, sort of a shine to them that makes it look cool. Yeah. I don't know where I want to fight from. That buffs enemies in range with lifesteal. But I really feel like I should take the high ground. Like, we've got a we've got a solid choke point right here. Like, if they come up from behind, I sort of feel like I'm just going to vaporize them. You wouldn't throw an axe at that guy, because why not? One less guy on the field is better than this many guys on the field. We have a healer this time around, though, which I think makes the whole thing a lot less precarious. Grab a chicken real fast while we wait for these guys to get over here. All right, bash them up, boys. Can you not attack right there? I was going to say, you should definitely be able to attack right there. Go ahead and give me... How much does that cost? 15? Go ahead and give me a holy strike on him. Oh, yeah! That's the stuff right there. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Always... Always trust in Sigmar. And there's no cooldown. Oh my god. We have, uh, we have found the perfect character for an undead map. This is the best. I'm so happy right now with all my decisions. And look how fast he regenerates. The man's a god. Yeah, drop a totem over there. Ooh, you get a little spell effect too for the extra holy damage you're kicking off. Go ahead and cancel his ability to do whatever it is he's about to do. Oh, don't do that. You need to stay right there. There we go. Don't get too crazy. Oh, he's dealing eight damage to you? Zap his ass. There we go. 
Teach him a lesson. What's his HP looking like? Execute him. Perfect. Yeah, I, I think the War Priest may be my guy. I wish he had like a big kind of Crusader kettle helm on with like a cross across the eyes or whatever. Like, but you know. Oh, cool. We got a free archer. Nice. I'll take that. We also got a leather patch that gives plus one to armor. We got coins of the realm and we got 150 reputation. And now we can have three guys. So the archer, a ranged fighter that keeps his distance and reigns ar- Okay, okay. Since you're our tank, I'm kind of tempted to give you six armor. And you're ranged anyways, so like, why wouldn't you throw a axe? Then again, the axe kind of wasted on the archer because he can fire his bow at anybody whenever he wants, so... I don't know what I should do here. I feel like I don't have the items that I want to make this all work. We have a battle over here. What is this? A merchant welcomes you to choose an item from amongst his goods. There's an arcane tunic and a power stone. Increases your endurance recovery. Let's take the tunic, I guess. Who can wear the tunic? Can anybody wear it because it's all magical and stuff? Okay, so put the magic tunic on him. We're going to miss out a little bit on the energy regeneration, but he shouldn't be getting hit quite as hard. Especially if we can, like, protect him. The Grim Legion has increased their dominance. We need to gather a band of heroes strong enough to best them before their grip becomes too tight. Yeah, so we are operating a little bit behind the clock right now. But we've got three guys, and I feel pretty good. So, can you hit that from right there? Like, how hard is it for you to hit that? So we want you on the lower ground. We want you right there. He's actually hitting stuff, but remember, they're skeletons, so they've got a big bonus against us. Yeah, they've got a big bonus. Oh, there's another axe over there. Go get that axe, dude. There you go. Good call. Take the axe, throw it at that guy. Perfect. Come back over here. That was a wee bit aggressive, but it was still fun. Okay, Duke's up against him. Honestly, I feel like we can probably just nuke our way out of this. Oh, he's out of energy. Never mind. My man is energyless. It took it out. Oh, it gave him a cooldown there. I wonder if the cooldown's just bugged. Like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I would definitely recommend adding a cooldown to that ability, though. It may be just because we're up against Undead, but it feels kind of, like, unabashedly strong. Like, it feels like a really good ability by comparison to what everybody else has. Like, 33 damage is a lot of damage for something that has no cooldown and his energy comes back that fast. Woof! Scroll of Fire. We have revealed one of their weaknesses. I felt that one. Our enemy moves slower on the battlefield. That makes sense because it's been annoying me waiting for him to cross the battlefield. Alright, so what are we doing over here? We have a battle in parlor. That'll give us a shield. We've got another character over there that we can recruit for a four out of four. And then we can go for... Yeah, let's do this battle real quick. The Grim Legion are getting close to dominating the region. By taking this outpost, it might give us more time to strengthen our position. What do you mean? What outpost? That one? I don't remember that being there. Maybe that clears out one of his little bubbles of influence. Are we on fire right now? Why am I on fire? What does that mean? A scroll of fire. All your heroes have a fire shield. Sweet. There's a lot of enemies, and we don't have a great spot to fight for them. Um. I am sort of of the opinion that we fight for this over here. Because we can use him... Get out of my way! And then... 
Oh, it had a cooldown that time. Okay. Step up to here, smack him, and then go ahead and give him an execution. Perfect. I want this spot. This is where I want to fight from. This is my place, and I'll pee on it if I have to. We just needed to find, like, a little nook where we could get comfy. And then I'll throw an axe at you. Good. I would recommend that when the enemies die, maybe make their stand have a little bit of terrain on it, just like a tabletop one would, based on what they're standing on. And, like, they get knocked over and shatter on the ground, but the bones and, like, the bodies stay there. Or like the blood splashes stay there. I like the I like the look of a populated battlefield that has debris from the conflict that has taken place. It makes a long fight feel a lot more emergent and a lot more interesting to me. It definitely needs like an action cam too. Like when I call down this lightning, it'd be super sick if it panned downwards and did like a slight rotation around the priest while he's doing like hand incantations and he's like chanting in Latin. You know, and you can see the energy building up in his hands, kind of like DBZ style. And then it looks up at the sky and lightning just kind of rockets down and hits the skeleton and explodes him. I think little bits of polish like that are going to be what separates this game from like a passing diversion to something actually like really cool and really special. Although I do like sort of the randomness and replayability that they've got in this. Like you never know what kind of maps you're going to get and you never know what characters you're going to get. And I like that aspect of it. You know what, dude? Introduce this man to Zeus. That's right. Zeus this man up. Zeus him out. There it is. Enjoy your in Did he just parry an arrow out of the air like Jonathan Wick? Okay. Yeah, that's a little concerning. And then what they can do uh, with those cutscenes, I know some people don't like those, but I do. I think they look cool. But they could just add a toggle, and it just reverts back to this mode right here. Call it like fast mode or something inside the options. Uh, the faction has lost dominance. Oh, yeah, they lost two little points right there. Cool. Yeah, I would say that this kind of looks like a hard fight to me. So that guy raises skeletons. So I think we're going to have to beeline him. I don't think we have any real positive way around it. I think we've got to kind of like focus here. We've got to push a direction and we've got to make it work. Uh, you give me a lightning on that side. There you go. We also don't want our archer to get left too far behind. There we go. All right, we got to fight our way up the hill. Luckily, these guys are really slow. That's their weakness. So we should be able to be okay here, maybe. You pick up a chicken, and I'm going to need you to throw said chicken at that guy. That'll stun him and keep him up out of my butt cheeks for now. We'll insta-kill him with an axe. You step up to there. You step to there. Archer, come back to here. Ooh, this one's... Oh, okay. What was that? This one's been a thinker so far. Give me one of those. You're going to drop lightning on him. I need DPS to start hitting him. Like, I need him to suffer. Oh, he's got the armor that protects him from magic. That's why it's doing zero damage, dude. He's trying to do the Voldemort thing right now where he's like channeling some weird leaky snotty beam at you. And it's just like bouncing off of him like Superman. Look at you. All right. You love to see it. All right, you guys get up here. Kill him off. Archer, I don't know... Just start putting a little bit of preliminary damage on him. You get up here and help out with the fight. My priest is taking damage, so we need to, like, somehow dig him out of this situation. There we go. Give me... Oh, boy. Give me... I don't know if I want to heal or if I want to nuke for damage. Nuke for damage. Get one of those Skeletors out of the way. And then step in over here. I just need to be able to advance and get on this Necromancer. 
You run for your life because the enemy's closing now. We have the height advantage here, so that should help us out. You use that on him. He should fire, like, way faster now. Oh, it's a fire arrow. Sorry. This one right here makes him fire super fast for, like, 20 attacks. It's pretty cool. It's pretty sweet. Uh, you probably want to smack that dude up before we get flanked. Yep, that's magical damage straight to my face holes. Dude, I'm going to need, like, anything and everything here to fix this. Okay, heal him. I wanted to nuke this guy one more time, but I don't think it's going to work like that. Give me 30 damage right there. I need him to die, and I need him to die, like, today. There we go. He's down, but he summoned one more on us, which kind of sucks. This is actually fairly tactical. It doesn't seem like it on first glance, but this is a thinking game. Like, you are constantly looking to figure out where on the battlefield is, like, the best position to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to the damage that you're dealing to enemies and, like, the spots that are, you know, going to be the safest to fight from. Like, I feel myself surveying a lot while I play. Like, this is not a game where you can just sit there and ignore what the enemy is doing and just be like, eh, and, like, W game your way through it. It ain't going to work like that. I do have healing herbs over there that I could have run and grabbed, but I think we're okay. I definitely think we'll be able to piece... Oh, there was one right behind me too, dude. I'm like maximum strength stupid. I could have grabbed that herb right there and healed him up. Man, I didn't, it looked like the environment. A metal shield. And then there's another party member over there, which I sort of feel like we might need. What does a shield do? Is he plus two armor and it gives you a 10% chance to deflect an attack. Oh, but he can't use it. But the priest probably can, yeah? There you go. That plus two armor is very helpful. Wait, he's not getting plus two armor. He should have five armor right now. What does he not have five armor? He should have five armor. Two plus three. Why does he have four? Oh, I have been robbed. I have been robbed so shabbily of that which I was owed. Let's go get this other character. Their dominance is, like, growing, though. I think one of the dice rolls is that their dominance grows. Oh, another necromancer fight, dude. Holy water. Oh, I can throw it on the shrine or what? Oh, they've got one of the tough guys over here, too. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wheel around this way. Actually, no, we're not. You're going to go grab that axe. Oh, don't go that way. That's a mistake. That's really going to hurt. Don't do that. All right, so you get up there. These guys are slow, so we should have time to take care of this. You come over here. First blast goes there. You step up to there. Execution. Throw an axe. Step forward. And before too long, we want to be on that guy right there. This time around, we don't have the benefit of the high ground, which kind of sucks. It's not ideal anyways, but it's going to have to work. Um... I feel like I'm going to get more mileage out of the plus two that we get from the Holy Relic. Axe that guy so we don't get flanked. Looks good. Give me the Holy Relic right there. Yeah, with this many people hitting that guy, that damage I think is going to add up. Oh, he's taking a lot of damage though. He is actually kind of getting messed up. Oh, it's because he's doing his little beam channel thing. Yeah. All right. I'm hoping that once we get through that enforcer, this will start to get simpler. Okay. 
You fight there. You move up to there. Crowd this guy a little bit. If you can, smack him. That'll restore his MP so that he can heal you because you got the kill. You keep fighting him. You get the high ground right here. Fire arrow him. Very nice. All right, now we're actually putting like some damage on the guy that matters. Whether or not it's gonna be enough. We got 30 damage right there. Get him with it. That powers up another heal, which pulls our asses out of the fire. Beautiful. Man, yeah, I like this combat system. This is good, dude. This is solid. Like, if they can get the rest of the accompaniment in order for this game, like the presentational stuff, just the little things, like the dead space on the map, and, and like some of these menus right here being a little bit more immersive with like a 3D scroll that unfurls like in the foreground with your rewards. And like when you come across events, you don't just get a pop-up that says like you see a merchant. It's actually got like text that you read through that describes the environment and the trees and everything else, dude. We got an Inquisitor. Well, it seems like we're kind of like... It seems to me... What does she do? Litany. Blinds a target, reducing their chance to hit and their resistances. Strike three tiles away and deal five holy damage for four seconds to all adjacent to that attack. Boof! Okay. Some interesting character design. I mean, we've come this far. I don't think we can get more characters. I think we're good. We're at four out of four for this map. So we got to break through the gate to get to the boss. We've also got to break through that palisade. Either that or we can break through on this side. They've got a necrom... They got two necromancers. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is about to be a headache. With two necromancers, anyways. All right, so we need to get in here. Before they block us. Otherwise, we're going to get choked a little bit. With your zeal ability, your zealot attack, what does that do? I see. It's a jumping attack. Okay. Fair enough. We have a lot of enemies to deal with here. You move up. I need more battle. I need more fighters in this battle. There we go. Flank. Flank like your life depends on it because it does. Does he have 30 HP? He does not have 30 HP left. Let's go ahead and nuke him real quick. That puts him at 28, which means I can execute him, which instantly resets the cooldown there. I'm going to save it, though. I don't want to go too crazy with my willpower usage. I do want to get over here. Oh man, there's like zombies being spawned everywhere. This is actually becoming an issue pretty quickly. You get up to there. Yeah. Luckily, they picked somebody to shoot that's not that big of a threat, so that's good. Give me a holy relic right there, maybe. It's expensive, but we could use the extra damage, especially the archer. Okay, we're through right there. You just get on him for a couple seconds. She's holding back here and fighting that skeleton. Lines of target reducing their chance. Everybody's HP looks okay. Alright, you get in there and fight him. It's going to be a little while before he dies. But we're looking alright. We're in base contact now, which is good. 
I mean, the goal isn't even really to kill these guys, though. It's to break through the gate. We gotta break the gate over there, and I'm, I mean, until we get the necromancers, there's three of them, dude. Until we get the necromancers down, I just don't have faith that we're gonna be able to pull this off. Light that one on fire. It'll have to do. You save yourself from getting flanked. Keep smacking him up. You avoid getting flanked over here. I believe he's tanking too much right now. He's going to need some help. Or he's going to die, one or the other. Give me an axe throw right there. I mean, even getting one or two of these guys out of the way would help. Fire arrows over there. Oh, this guy's bogged down as hell. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to die is probably what's going to happen. Just light that entire area on fire. I was going to say, he's going to have to hold for a minute, but I just don't know how he's going to do it. We got one necromancer down. All right, so Lord Craig is good to go. They use their magic on him again, which is actually really good for us because he's immune to it, but he's still getting chewed on pretty good. Give me a zealot attack right there. Man, they're summoning faster than I can kill them. More fire arrows. I don't even know if they can... If I don't even know if the fire is helping, but... Restore everybody's mana. You... Run a hot and spicy heal on yourself. Okay. You on the gate. The rest of you are just going to have to hold and, like, run away if necessary. I may have overplayed my hand here, but I'm doing my best. Somebody's got to go break the gate. Warpriest is already looking low on health again. Yeah, just keep holding the line, man. Kick him. Almost got that Necromancer. Is the door almost down? It's got a few hits left in it. We managed to break through, though. I do like that the objective here is not necessarily to defeat the enemy. It's like the, it's like the Ender's Game thing. The enemy's gate is down. You have a higher cause right now. And now we have the boss fight where we fight the Skeleton Lord. Luckily, we get a hard reset, and we get all of our HP back, so that's cool as hell. He's coming around that way. Go ahead and chuck an axe at him. Why not? I mean, it's 20 damage, right? And then Battle Priest. See if you can get a cheeky flank, actually. Wait for them to close the gap right here. And then just see if the flank works out. The bad, with, the bad news with this group is we don't have anybody that can strip the enemy's armor off. So if we had, like, a rogue, we can dig a dagger into them, and it negates all their armor, so they take more damage. But these heavily armored guys are going to be an issue, I think. Yeah, you go ahead and get in behind him. Oh, that was not expected. Throw a heal over there. I don't know if you just want to, like, skitch. Go ahead and blind him, I think. Can I do that? Can he be blinded? I don't think he can be blinded. Unfortunate. Okay, then you do like a zealot strike over to there. I need people's mana back, so we're going to insta-execute him. Come back over here for the flank on him. He's doing something which concerns me. 
I don't know what he's doing. He's probably summoning more skellies. Go ahead and nuke that guy to get him out from behind you. Is he, like, empowering those skeletons? I don't know exactly what's happening here. Get rid of that one, just in case. I don't know. Uh, we've got a strong flank going right here for a lot of damage. Oh, he's life draining. That's upsetting. Don't like that at all. Oh boy, we're pretty beat up, man. We're not looking good right now. I'm not exactly sure what my plan is right now. All right, things are things are not looking good. Uh, I think I can keep him up for a little while longer, but that life drain really messed us up, man. We finally got a flank on him. Kill that guy. Everybody on this dude. I want, like, all the blood and violence in the world on this guy. You move over to there so that he can actually be kicked, maybe. More skellies up. Don't love it. Oh, that skelly's going to come after the archer, too, I think. Heal. Slam for 30 damage. Blind that guy so he can't hit very well. Increase your attack speed. The archer was kind of an unfortunate draw here. Just because the skeletons are so strong against archers, we have such a bad flank happening on this side with our priest. Like, I'm just trying to keep any type of damage on this lord, though. Like, I feel like just aggressively going for him is, like, the only way we're getting out of this. Oh, there we go. All right. Woof. Hot and spicy right there. I'm pretty sure you can level up your characters, too. Like, you get these little scroll things. You have conquered the region of Raman, and now you can promote one of your heroes. There you go. Promote the war priest. I want him promoted. Heroes that are staying behind to protect the region with the gear collected. You gain three scrolls of secrets, and the journey moves on. Okay, so we've won our, we've won our first area, and it looks like we have a skill tree now. There we go. I knew I could upgrade guys, but I couldn't remember if I upgrade guys like... I couldn't remember if I upgrade guys from the the individual maps or from the overworld. We also have that big hammer right there. I don't know if he can use it. Yeah, I don't think he's a hammer user. He might be able to use it, though. Maybe. I don't even know if I can equip it from here. Okay, so let's pick some skills. Sanctuary Relic. Divine Relic. Spawn a Relic for 30 seconds. I feel like we have that. Oh, we're specializing it. So we can make it into an AoE heal, plus we still get the bonus damage. Or we can make it have a 35% chance to do even more damage. Okay. 10 hit points right there. Breach damage right there. Let's take the breach damage, I guess. That feels alright to me. It doesn't look like any of our guys can use the Bone Splinter Mace. It says he uses a mace, but it won't let me put it on him. Weird. I don't know. Either way, this is Successor. I'm actually impressed with this build. I've been watching this game for a long time, and every time I come back to it, I'm like, eh, it's not ready. And then, like, this time I came back, and I was really happy with, like, how the prologue and the tutorial played, so I figured we'd check it out. Successor, a strategy RPG with a little bit of a roguelite bent to it that you can check out and go to the playtest right now. Help the developers out by giving them your feedback. It costs you nothing. I'm sure you can kill an afternoon on this game. I will see you all later. Thus far, I'm impressed with it. I think it needs little details, and I think it needs the garnish, and it needs, like, the polish to go along with the presentational parts. 
Uh, like a lot of, I think a lot of the early menus and whatnot can be cleaned up to be made to look a little nicer and whatnot. And there's little things with the models and with the presentation of attacks. But by and large, I think this is shaping up well. I will see you all later. Bye, folks.